everybody. Thanks for dropping by. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I have a free stationary gift box tutorial set up for you here. So what this is is a six inch by five inch stationary box and it is super easy to make and they are great for gift ideas. All right, so I'm gonna take off the lid and what happens is, is this opens up. And I'll just kind of tilt this back so you can see. Uh, down here, what we have is a little pocket. You can actually put postage stamps in there. Uh, down here, I have a pen in here and a little pen holder that we make. And this is a notepad that we make. And I show you how to make this from scratch. And these um, are very easy to tear out. Okay, so right back in here, what we have is a small little pocket that can hold the gift tags. Over here, you can stick little note cards in there. Things that you can stamp on, handwrite little notes, some extra little white paper, and so forth. So that's what I had in here. And back here is where there are envelopes and regular size cards. So I have six envelopes in here that just slide right back in. And in the video, I show you how I achieve getting the easy cards that are flat so that when you mail these out, it only takes a postage stamp. So real easy. Now, if you want to step it up a notch and start adding more stuff and really getting into the cards, do so. But they are all blank inside. <clears throat> Just really fun, easy little cards. So for this, it doesn't take much paper. In fact, I'm using one of the paper packs that has only 10 sheets in it that will give me two of these. So let's move into that. And it does not take much here. Uh, so let's just go over a few things. Uh, you're definitely going to want your glue, and I do recommend Art Glitter Glue that dries clear, and also with a metal tip so not too much glue comes out. It's more of a precision tip, and it controls the flow. And score tape. Now you're not going to need a whole lot of this. Now I've taught this before, mainly with the score tape, but I'm using the 3 8 so if you are you only have a little bit left of your 3 8 on your roll, then you don't need to buy a new one. We don't use much. This is pretty much for our pockets to get them down. So definitely we'll want that. You're going to need six envelopes. And the envelope size that I have here is just the, the regular one. They're the 4 and 3 8 by 5 and 3 quarters. Or you can make your own. Okay, the paper. We're going to use the Stamperia Spring Botanic paper. It's the 12 by 12. There are 10 sheets in this, and you should be able to get two stationary boxes out of this, depending on how we use the paper. All right, you're going to want 12 by 12 uh, white cardstock, and we just got this into the, the store. And it's a really good buy, actually. Uh, you get 25 sheets, and they list it as uh, 80 pound, I believe. And this is the AC cardstock, American Crafts. And um, one thing about this is it does not feel quite as thick as our other 12x12 12 12 85 pound cardstock. It's a little bit less, but it's still a good quality, and I really like this. This will be awesome for my mini albums as well. So you're going to want to get... Um, for the base and the pockets and the lid, you'll need probably about three sheets. And then what you're going to want is for your card bases um, uh, accordingly. Um, make sure that you download the pre-cutting and scoring guide uh, so that we're all ready to go. And we will be reviewing those scoring and cuts before we begin. Okay, for the outside, I decided I wanted to make some um, 
flowers and leaves. And what I wanted to use was the new Wild Asters Stamp and Die Set by Heartfelt Creations. It is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see that I was able to shape these in different ways. And I do have the glossy accents on top of it to really shine them up and stiffen them up since this is going to be on the outside of my stationery box. But if you don't want anything on the outside, you don't have to. I thought that this would look really nice. And then inside here, I have the lemon chiffon prills, my go-to prills. But uh, we sell these in a variety of colors, so choose what you would like. Now for the inks that I used. I used the Tim Holtz uh, Worn Lipstick. I thought that that was a gorgeous color and it's going to match in any uh, page that we use in this paper collection. Now on the inside of there, we did use some Squeeze Lemonade on the inside of the flowers. And I'm going to show you how to do those. Um, as far as the greenery, I stamped the leaves with the peeled paint. I went around the edges kind of dark there with my inking and then I just kind of lightly rubbed on the ink and then I blotted it with crushed olive. So very easy inking techniques as well as flower shaping and I'll show you that before we get started here. I'm going to be showing you how to make a little notepad uh, from scratch and you're going to want to grab some maybe Elmer's uh, rubber cement and I do have, a, I think I have a few in my store. But in any case, this is what we will be using. All right, only other things I can think of that you are going to need is your scoring board and paper cutter, scissors, pencil, ruler is always good to have, um, your scoring tool, and a craft knife to help you get the adhesive up from the uh, score tape. So let's begin. Shaping our flowers. So I'm going to show you the easiest way um, with a larger nib and a smaller. So majority is going to be done with the larger size nib here. So I'm going to take the largest flower. It's very simple. You take the larger nib, start up here, and just pull it in. And allow that flower to start taking shape. as you can see and you can get really quick at this too just running it in and it curls all in there okay so once you have it all done like this what we're going to do is carefully turn it over like this we'll take the smaller side and we're going to run it around that middle and you'll start seeing that your flower starts to pop up so there's two for that and now with these, uh, I'm going to put one in the center. So I'm going to take the larger and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Now glossy accents, I am definitely going to be using this on there uh, to give it more strength since I'll be having cover flowers. And that's what's going to help us. So now you use the littler one and you just sweep in the inside. So here's uh, some larger ones. So I'm going to put a little hot glue in the center of my largest one. Sometimes it's easier just to do like that. Anyway, I'm going to place it down in the center and use my tool to push down. So it's going to be look like this. Now I'm going to take the next size. I'll put some glue in there and I'm going to try to offset that a bit. I'll use the larger nib in here and I'll press down in the center. So now I've got this beautiful uh, aster. I have my lemon chiffon prills. Now you don't have to use this color. Um, I'm using it, it's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna grab my wet glue here and I'm just gonna put some right, a dab right in the center there. And then I'm just going to pour this in. Now that is more than enough, so I'm going to pour the majority back into my thing. And then what you will have is a beautiful center. 
As soon as that dries, then we can apply our glossy accents. Let's work on a different style flower. We have a different style flower that's on the outside. And what I have is two of the uh, next size down from the largest. So I've got two of these. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is work on the center one and um, I'm just going to place it so the ink is up and also you're going to want to ink the back and you don't have to be specific, you just have to run your ink over it. So with this I'm going to use a smaller ball and I'm just going to pull these right on in so that is what you should have. Okay, so with this one, the next one we're going to need is the same size and we're just going to flip it down. And what we're going to do is pull those in again. So this is what you should have with this one. Now just slightly pull those all back like this. We're going to put some glue at the bottom of the first one we made. And we're going to place it in the center. I want to put some prills in there, so I'm going to put some glue and dump some prills in. And this one's a little more messy. You might want to get a little tray out or something. Okay, so I have it like this. Now all we're going to do is kind of push it together. So now we have a flower and it will look nice sitting next to this one. Now, leaves. For my leaves, now you can use your stylus to shape your leaves or you can just leave them the way they are. I'm going to use the larger nib and to get me started I'm just going to kind of pull in the sides here just a little bit. Okay, and once you have it like that, you'll lay it out and you can use a small end to kind of pop them up a little. And then you can just kind of go like this. Okay, or you can do it this way. Depends on what you want. And then they'll pop up like this. So here is flat, which looks absolutely gorgeous too. And I don't always shape my leaves. So my prills are dry and I'm going to kind of show you what I like to do. I like to get an old paintbrush and you're definitely going to want to wash this immediately after applying your glossy accents or you will uh, ruin your uh, brush. So I just put a little bit of the glossy accents uh, on a scratch piece of paper and then I just apply it. It's real easy and it's going to be sticky, it's going to look wet, and then it's going to dry like that. So it's going to look really nice. So I'm going to get this one done. Okay, for the flowers, what you're going to want to do is, I usually try to get the ones that are under the bottom layer first. And I just kind of go around getting all the layers. So that is all there is to it. And as you can see, it's very sticky until it dries. It comes out really pretty. So same goes with this. I'm just going to get the outside layers first here. And then I'll get what I can see on the inside. And for this one I'm just kind of brushing inward for that flower. Let's go over our scoring that we did. And what we're working with is a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of cardstock. Now one thing in the pre-cutting, I said verify you are 12 inches each way. Sometimes there are 12 inches and a 16th or whatever extra. So it does make a difference on this so that you line up correctly. So let's begin. We're 12 inches, of course, across the board. We scored at, whoops, one inch, three inches, nine inch, and eleven inches. We rotated this once and then we just scored at five inches and seven inches. And we called that our base. 
And I think you can see that. All right, so for our lid, what we cut was a six and three eighths by 10 and three eighths piece. And all we did with this, we started it with laying it across our board. It really mattered not whether you're laying 10 and 3 eighths or 6 and 3 eighths because the scoring is the same on each side. So on each piece, we scored it 2 and 1 eighth. We rotated it once, 2 and 1 eighth. We rotated it again, 2 and 1 eighth, and then the last time two and one eighth. So you should have something that looks like this. And that's our lid. Okay, next piece that we did was a four inch by seven and seven eighths, and we called that our large pocket. We laid this on our scoring board. We scored at one inch and six and seven eighths inch. And we were laying this at seven and seven eighths across our board, of course, the long way. Then we rotated it so that we were four inches across and we scored at one inch. Our next piece was our medium pocket. And on our medium pocket, we had a two and a half inch by five and a quarter inch. And we laid this on our scoring board, so we were five and a quarter across. We scored at a half inch, one inch. We rotated it, so we were two and a half across our board, and we scored this at a half inch. We had made a small pocket, and this one was two and a half inches by four and five eighths. We laid this on our scoring board, so we were four and five eighths across our board. We scored it at a half inch, one inch, three and five eighths, and four and one eighth. Then we rotated this so we were two and a half inches across and we scored at a half inch and we labeled that small pocket. We did cut a very small piece that is optional in this two by two and a quarter and we called it a stamp pocket. There was no scoring. Now with this we can actually trim it down if needed during the tutorial to fit what we want to do. But this is pretty much a standard size for me on these uh, stationary gift boxes. It's our stamp pocket. For the notepad we cut a three and three eighths by eight and a half inch piece. We laid this on our scoring board, so we were eight and a half across. We scored at four and one eighth and four and three eighths. And we called that our notepad. Okay, the next thing that was, and it's all determined upon what kind of thickness your paper is. If you're using copy paper, then you will need to cut more. If you're using 65 pound paper for your inner pages for your notepad, uh, it'll take less paper than, of course, your copy paper. What we were after was a three and one eighth by four inch, um, several pieces. And you do not want to go over, a, when you sandwich it down, you do not want to go over a quarter inch in thickness. So that was something uh, that we needed to do. And then what we did for our card bases, we cut a five and a half by eight and a half inch. And there were six of these because we have six in there. We laid it on our scoring board and we scored each at four and a quarter. And those will fit nicely once we fold into those standard little envelopes. Alrighty. Let's get started. Grab your scoring board or your paper cutter and lay your piece across. Now when we're laying it across, we have two of our score lines going through here. And then we have several, four, going this way. So that's how I'm going to look at it here. 
So on, if you lay it on your scoring board, if you hit the two inch mark here, you can make a little pencil mark and come over to 10 inches and you will make a little pencil mark right there. So that's gonna be our guide for our extra little cut we will be needing to make. Okay, so for this, if you have a paper cutter that you can actually bring the blade down in the middle, um, it will help you keep straight. Otherwise, you can use your scissors to cut. So the first thing that we are going to do is, and I'm gonna show you this, is you see in here this square. We are going to cut along each one of these lines and up to remove this piece and we'll do the same. We'll come over here to this point, down and over to remove that piece. And I am going to use the paper cutter because I am notorious for cutting crooked on my own. So I'm just gonna do the best I can here. Get me started by cutting these lines. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's these. So let's go ahead and cut these completely out. All right, so we have these cut out. Remember those little notches or pencil marks at the two inch and the 10 inch? This is where I'm gonna line it up and that is where we are gonna cut. Now leave this part alone, it needs to be long. This is the part that has to be short. So here's my first pencil mark and I am just going to cut this off. And I'm gonna flip it over, here's my pencil mark and I'm gonna cut that off. So all we're after is making a piece that looks like this. All right, I'm gonna get this out of my way. Now all we need to do is fold on all those score lines and definitely use your tool to sharpen those up. And we'll be folding on these as well. So let's do that. Okay, this is our base. So right now what I want you to do is flip it over so the peak are all up. This is going to be what we see on the outside. These are the longer ones. If you were to bring this up, and once we get our pockets in here, it'll be stable. These are what wrap back behind and then the lid comes down on top. See? So, one thing is, is when you have this laid out in front of you on the long part, um, all of our stuff is going to be upright facing us. Now, when we get down to here, if we're placing our papers, it's gonna be upside down because remember, this comes back at around. And if you place it to where the print is actually all uniform facing us, when this wraps back around, it will be upside down. So I will remind us before we get to that point. What we wanna do now is start laying our papers. We're gonna cut our papers and start laying them in the, each of these little panels here. And then we're gonna do the same for the inside. So let's get into our paper pack. In your paper pack, you will find this gorgeous print. On the back, it is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I'm cutting mine so that you can get the same um, results. So the first thing is, is I'm going to turn my paper sideways because I always try to stay consistent on how to tell you to measure over and cut. That way we're not all over the board, cutting to this way, this way, that way. So with your paper looking at it sideways like this, measure over four and seven eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have. The other piece just stick off to the side in, in, in a scrap pile or reserve pile because we will be getting into that. Turn this back upside down because we're gonna start measuring over this way. Measure over 
5 and 7 8 inch and cut. This is what you should have. So keep this handy here, okay? This piece, and this is our large side, this piece is going to go right here. So we'll, we'll just place it in there. Uh, for now, we'll glue it all down when we're ready. All right, look at your piece like this. We have the green over here. Measure over one and seven eighths inch and cut. This is what you should have. And I think what we're gonna do with this one is we're just going to place that one right here. With this, measure over one and seven eighths inch again and cut. And you should have this, keep this handy. Actually, I'm gonna move this one right on over to this side. This one, go right on over to that side. All right, now, looking at your piece like this, measure over 7 8 inch and cut. And then I want you to measure over again 7 8 inch and cut. This is what you should have, and this one's going to go right over there. Now this one I absolutely slipped, so I am going to have mine, um, and I have this little thing here, so I'm going to have to glue that back. But I think what I'm going to do is just kind of flip this around and stick that right there. We are ready to glue these down. So um, I like to start in the middle. I'm going to apply my glue. Make sure I get those edges. I'll bring it down to the bottom where that score line is without going over. And I'll center that between the other side score lines and glue that down. And we'll have a little bit of a white lip up there. Then what we'll do is the same thing here. We can now line up with the middle and we will get right in between those score lines with that, this, this and this. And then that way, since we got our middle one, it'll be easier just to line up the top of our decorative paper with that one. So let's do that. I have mine down, and now I'm gonna just pull this right on up so I can get to this side. In your paper pack, it's your last sheet of your pack. You will find this, and on the other side, you will find this. And we're just going to turn it sideways, so if you want to look at it like this, you can. We will measure over 4 and 7 eighths inch and cut. So we'll be working with this for just a moment, and what we're going to do is just turn that back around. The first thing we're going to do is just measure over 7 eighths inch, and we're going to cut. Then we're going to measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Then another 7 eighths inch and cut. Okay, we are going to do the same thing we did before. And it isn't going to matter because I decided not to use a print that it would matter um, as far as which way it goes. So, but on the middle one, you will notice you have a darker band up here than the rest. This is going to be placed like this. So we're going to apply glue and glue that down. And you'll bring it to down by the score line down there so you have a white lip here. And we'll just take these and glue these down as well. Grab this back out of your reserve or scrap pile. And this is the back part of the paper pack. We're going to measure over 1 and 7 8 inch and cut. And now what we're going to do is just measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. We're going to apply glue, and this is the bottom of our stationary box, but we're going to center that right on in there and burnish that down really good. Now that we have pretty much all the paper for the outside down, let's just grab this and flip it over. Now when we open up the stationary gift box after taking off the lid, it's going to open up so the largest part is going to be down here and this is what stands up. In your paper pack you will find this print. On the back it is this. For this piece all we're going to do is just kind of turn it sideways. We're going to measure over 4 and 7 eighths inch and cut. So this is what you should have. The blue little print is over here, writing over here. Flip this around upside down. Measure over 7 eighths inch and cut. 
then you'll measure over five and seven eighths inch and cut, and then you'll measure over seven eighths inch and cut. So, so that you can understand what we're really doing is these are like one inches, right? And in here, it's always going to be going this way, about five and seven eighths for our cut. This way, it's always four and seven eighths. Alrighty, so turn this around so the blue is right here and the writing is facing towards us now. We're going to apply glue and center that. We'll give ourselves a little white lip up here. And we'll just place these how they're supposed to go, the writing. And this one goes over here. And then we'll burnish it down. In your paper pack, you will find this lovely print. And on the back, it is this. And this is, I think, what we would like to get at. But in order to have the same leftover pieces, let's just make sure we cut this the same way. So I'm going to turn this sideways. I will measure over 4 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Okay, so we're going to have a series of different cuts here. And how I'm going to be doing this is starting over here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to measure in 7 eighths inch, which is this small. So my first one is cut at 7 eighths and I'll just stick that there. I haven't decided whether I want this up or like this and I have a feeling we're going to go with this up and then add our color which will really look cool. But in any case this one here we're just going to turn it to where the bottom is right like that and we'll place it there. Next one 1 and 7 eighths inch and cut. We will flip it and I am actually going to just keep placing these so they match up. Our next one, measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. And we have this, we're going to measure over 1 and 7 eighths inch and cut and then we'll measure over 7 eighths inch and cut. Okay, all of our pieces are ready to glue down. So I'm going to start with the middle one, making sure I leave a little bit of white here and we'll have a little bit of a white border here. And we will glue and burnish and we will continue on gluing all of these down. Alright, grab this back out of your reserves or scrap pile. This is the one with this and this is what it looks like. We're going to measure over 1 and 7 eighths inch and cut. So we have this very long strip. And the first thing I'm going to want to do with this is, I'm going to put this on my paper cutter, but I'm going to trim off this little edge that has this lip. So I've got that off, I just don't want it to look funny, so I'm going to measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. This piece here, we're going to apply glue, and it goes right in here, so you'll want to uh, Make sure you are even from side to side, leaving a little bit of white here and here and here and here. And burnish it down. We'll build the lid last, but right now we are ready to start building, putting the pockets in. So we're going to start with the uh, large pocket, just like this. And what we're going to want to do here is, you see your little lines and it forms a square. We're just going to cut up to the score line going this way and over. And get those out. We'll do that over here too. Up to the score line and over. Let's fold on those score lines. Okay, we're going to look at this with the peaks up. We're going to find our paper. In your paper pack you will find this pretty print. It has some butterflies and different insects. So I'm not really into the beetles and stuff so I'm going to keep that out. On the back is this. So I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to measure over 2 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Okay, we have uh, three different measurements we're going to need. And this is real simple. Remember these are 1 inches on these. Kind of like the same on our base. Um, first thing we're going to do is measure over 7 eighths inch and cut. Then we're going to measure over 5 and 3 quarters inch and cut. And we'll measure over 7 eighths inch and cut again. 
So this is what you should have. You should end up with two pieces that are 7 8 inch wide that will fit here and here. And you will have five and three quarters. So what we're going to do is first lay down the middle piece and I like to just push that bottom flap out of the way. And I'm going to bring it down so that I have a little bit of a white lip there so you can tell the pocket where the dimension is. And if I fold those in, I should have a little bit of a white border on each side. So once you have that, glue it down, burnish it, and then what you will do is place these. So we're going to place our score tape. Now one thing I want to point out is it's not necessary to place your paper here, but just in case you don't fit it in all the way back, you don't have a bunch of white showing. So that's why I do do this. Okay, score tape. This is where our score tape comes into play for us. And we're going to want our 3 8 inch score tape. Let's start with the bottom. And we will place a piece right down here. And then right here just underneath. Oops, I'm going to trim this off. Just underneath that score line. Okay, this is what I was talking about over here. So I'm going to move in just like uh, a little bit in from the side and I'm going to place my score tape. So I can still see probably about a sixteenth of that paper showing. And before we place it, you can always add a little glue in case yours isn't going to show. It just all depends on, you know, how far back you're going to get this push. And I'm going to show you the easiest way so that you don't have to worry about that. Alright, let's burnish that down. Make sure all the air is out. And we are going to grab this. And we are working with this piece, the shorter piece. And I am going to remove score tape backing from the bottom. It's going to be easiest for us. So I'm going to turn it like this. My sticky side is down. I want you to pull this up. And before you place it down, just kind of put it in the little crease there where the, sco the score line is. And try to get it centered side to side. And if you can get it all the way back in there, then you can just press it and burnish. Okay? The idea is to get it as far back as possible because we have those two pockets up here and then we want to leave a gap up through here once the other pockets sit in here so that our notepad when we fold it up doesn't mash our pockets. Okay, it is time and we are going to do these one at a time. So I release this side. I want you to bring this in and what you're going to do is line it up with the crease on this piece. Okay, so it's straight. So look at your sides. Now you should be able to bring this in. Okay, and I got it on correctly so I am lined up. So at this point I'm just going to pull that in and I definitely need to make sure I burnish that down. Okay, let's do the other side now that it's standing upright. And now you can actually feel a little more stability um, and wait till we get the other pockets on there. And we will do the same thing. Bring in our side until it hits the thing, making sure it's kind of straight. And we're going to pull in our side. And you should be good. And again, if you didn't, that's what that paper is for if you don't get it all the way back in so that you don't have a bunch of white showing over there. Okay, this is what yours should look like and it should be pretty sturdy just to stand up by itself. Let's grab our medium pocket and our small pocket. Now down here in both of them you're going to have the same thing you're going to see two little squares. You're going to see a score line up and over and we're going to clip on that. 
on both of our pockets to remove this little square. So we're going to do that with our small pocket as well. And then what we're going to do once we get these cut out is we're going to just going to fold back on these score lines here on each piece and burnish. Okay, so this is very easy in your reserves or scrap pile. We should have this on the back. It looks like this. And I want to get these in on my pocket. So we're going to measure over one and seven eighths inch and cut. Our first cut on this is we're going to measure over three and a quarter inches and cut. We're going to work with the medium pocket here. So just fold in your sides and make sure that that's a good fit. You fit side to side. You can also bring up that bottom piece there. So all you have to look at is what's going to fit. And if you bring that all the way almost to the bottom, leaving a little bit of a white border, it will give you a nice white border at the top. We're going to glue that down and burnish it down. Now we have this little piece. On this one, we're going to measure over two and five eighths inch and cut. Okay, let's fold up the bottom and the sides here. Make sure that you are going to fit and you'll line it up the same as this one. We'll glue and burnish those down. Okay, now there are places we need to lay our score tape. So my medium pocket is here and the small one is over here. So on the bottom flaps, we're going to place a piece of score tape across the bottom there. We'll burnish it down as soon as we get these down, as soon as we get all the score tape down. Okay. So next what I want you to do is on your medium pocket, and here's my crease, right next to our print we have this. And I want you to place a piece of score tape right in here because we're going to connect the small one. Now, we also need to start placing some of our tape in other places. So medium one, let's go all the way over to the left on that left little panel there. Leave that one alone. This one over here next to the other one. Okay, we're gonna come over here we're on the small, on the outside one, we're going to need a piece of score tape. Okay. And on the outside one over here, we're going to need a piece of score tape. All right. We're also going to need some half inch pieces here. So when we cut off this, you should have this piece right here left over. Let's measure over, let's do 3 8 inch and cut, measure over again 3 8 inch and cut. Okay, so I have a, I've got like three pieces out of this, so we're going to use it. Let's take this one, and I think I want the, the blue to kind of match up over here. This is my small pocket. And I'm going to lay that, centering it, trying to match up there. Okay, I have another one, and uh, hang tight. Let's let's grab this other one over here. We have three. It really doesn't matter. I'm just kind of OCD on placing things, is all. And we'll place one here. Okay, we're going to save this. We're not going to put anything here because we don't need anything on this one, but let's flip this over. We're going to need four half inch pieces now. In your reserves, you're going to find the small print that matches up to this. And mine is about two and seven eighths by four and a half. It's perfect for what I need it for. I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to measure over one and seven eighths inch and cut. So this is what I have. I need four pieces that are half inch wide. So I'll just keep measuring over half inch cut, 
half inch cut, and so forth until I have four pieces. The reason why we did these at a half inch, which is different from the others, is because they're gonna be on the inside and we want it to kind of hang over. So make sure your writing is going the right way. You'll apply glue and you'll put it all the way to the top so you can't see any white and you'll bring it right over to where your hinge is and you'll probably flop over a smidgen and that's what we want. It'll match in better. So we're gonna put one there. We'll grab another one and go to the outside and do the same thing and then on the small one the same thing. Just like this. We don't have to worry about the way down there because it doesn't show. So let's glue those down. I have mine down. It is now time to attach the small to this one. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the medium pocket. Remember this little guy here? I want you to pull this little one back behind. We don't need to see it. We don't want to see it. And we're going to remove the score tape. And we'll just set that down. Now, here's the small one. We're going to make sure that this all works. So I want you to push this all the way back behind. And now we're going to come overlap onto this one. Matching our sides, tops, our, matching our top and our bottom up. Okay, so now when you pull that back, we have this. Okay, let's attach it. So what I'm going to do is, because it's easier to do it now, is just remove the score tape backing from that little T we made back there. Don't let them go together, whatever you do. And now what I'm going to do is, on the bottom only of our pockets, we're going to remove that score tape. Okay, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to turn it like this. Here's sticky. Sticky's down here. And we are going to center that between the sides there, making sure it goes on even and push all the way back against that large pocket. Okay, and that's still sticky. So let's burnish that down before we do anything. Now we're going to bring this up and back against the pocket as best we can. And now you'll be able to see why I said to bring that those little pieces all the way up. All right, so I got mine in, but I definitely need to burnish that down. So I'm just gonna kinda push on down in there. Okay. Now the sides, that's the easy part. We're just gonna remove, we'll do one at a time. We're going to push this in and the sticky back behind and we're going to line it up with the side of our box here. So it's straight, as straight as we can. And then I'm just going to burnish that the best I can there. And I'm going to do this one too. Take off the sticky, bring it over and tuck that back behind and it goes up against my box and burnish that down. So now you should have your box just like that. Pretty simple. And as you make more of these, you'll be able to make them a lot quicker, I promise, because uh, I'm able to get these done rather quickly. Let's grab our notepad here and let's fold on those score lines. And while we, you're, we're gonna have our uh, our rubber cement drying while we do our lid and uh, the rest of the inside. So here it is, mine. Now take your stack of your papers that you wanted to put inside your notepad and I want you to just place it in there and if your thing is bulging up, it doesn't want to shut, that means you've got a few too many in there. Make sure you work your, your burnishing. Now you can see that it wants to come down better and it's a better fit. See, it's a good fit without making it pop up on me. Okay, 
So we're gonna need a piece of scratch paper. We're gonna start doing this. So I'm going to be putting this in an area shortly here, but I'm gonna stack these to make sure they are absolutely, and we'll set this to the side. And I'm going to stack them, make sure it is smooth up here. Let's get our rubber cement. And you're gonna to wanna to do this in an area that if you need to move yours out of the way or whatever, just make sure you stack them back. But we're just going to apply this goop, rubber cement, to one side here. And I like to go pretty thick. I don't worry about that first one or the bottom one because the first one comes off anyway. So just make sure that you got it in there. And then I'll run this to smooth off the top. Okay, I'm not going to worry about, like I said, that. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to try and get this up so you can see that it's on there. I think you can see that. So now I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to set it off to the side, off my work area, so that I can continue on. And by the time we're done with the lid, it'll probably be dry. You should have this piece in your scrap pile. <clears throat> we're going to use it. On the back, it probably has part of the back part. What we're going to do is cut this to three and a quarter by four inches. Once you do that, this is our little notepad here, cover. We're going to center that on the top there, leaving a little bit of a white border, side to side, top to bottom, and we're going to glue that down. In your paper pack, you will find this print. On the back, it looks like this. All we're going to do is cut out and around this middle one. So let's do that first, and then I'm going to show you how I like to uh, make this pop more. So let's cut out and around. Once you have it, what you can do is go around the edges um, with some of your pink or whatever. I'm going to leave mine alone. Instead, I'm going to apply glue to this. I'm going to grab a white scratch piece of paper. I'm going to glue this down. I'll burnish it down. And then I'm going to recut out and around this piece, leaving about a sixteenth inch of white border all the way around. So this is what mine looks like. And I'm going to apply glue and I'm going to glue that down right there. Okay, let's open this up. This is my cover, and I want to get something for here. I'm not going to put any paper down here because our pad mostly sits there, but I do want something for in here. You should have in your scrap pile or reserves this, another one of these, and I'm just going to uh, do a three and a quarter by four inch cut on this, and then I'm going to glue it down to the inside cover of my pad. Okay, I have mine all glued down to the inside, so that's what it's going to look like. All I need to do is add my pad, but I'm not ready yet. So to the back of this, we are going to add our glue to glue this down into our stationary box. And when you do it, do not put it on the score line here, but I bring it so I am about 1 8 inch in from this score line. And bring it up as far as I can without getting on the other one and trying to line it up straight. Once I have it where I want it, then I can burnish it down. Okay, the little pocket, the little stamp pocket I'm going to be placing right about here. And also we have to put place our little pencil holder there, there which is very easy to do. But look in your reserve area for a piece of paper that you would like to use. I have this, and I think that some of these pretty little flowers are going to look really nice in here. So the one I'm after is this nice and bright one, I think. So for me, I like to keep my paper nice and when I have other things that can be used because definitely can use this other piece and these leftover pieces for my next stationary box uh, using the same paper. So um, for me, I'm going to put this on my paper cutter and I'm going to cut here and here and cut out and around so I have a nice uh, square to start. 
So I got a couple pieces here and I will be um, cutting down my pocket some to accommodate this and I think that'll look really pretty. So I'm going to glue this down and then I'm going to cut out and around this and I'll probably leave just a little bit of white showing on the sides and the bottom to separate out. And I'll show you what mine looks like. I cut mine down a little bit and now I am ready to place this. So I'm just going to give a little bend here and I'm going to place a line of glue on each of the sides. Don't glue the top and then the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to place it up right about here. Press and then I'm going to push in with my fingers so that I have a nice opening for that pocket. It's easier to get things in and I'll burnish around it. This I thought was really cute and I think I want to put it over here. Now this is going to have to be cut at an angle because I want to dress this up. If I put it like this we have that score line there, right? So here's a trick. What I want you to do is where you see the score line at the top I'm going to have mine angled. My score line up here I'm going to put on my decorative paper and then I'm going to come down here where that score line is and put a notch on this. Now I'm going to put this on my paper cutter, line up my blade here to here and slice it and then I can glue it down and my thing will still open and shut. So I'll show you mine. So these are my pieces and the first one I'm going to go for the big one. And when I do this, it's going to be right by that score line, really snug in there, but also still allowing my score line to do its job. So if I pull this up and I push it all the way up against, I know I'm okay. Get on there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So now when this comes up, I know I have to line it up in there. So I can just push it up while it's still wet, the glue, push it all the way down. And then I know that that will fit in there. Look in your reserve for some sort of scrap piece, whether it's this size or what. All we're going to do is grab a pencil and first let's get us started. And I'm going to show you this. There's no right and wrong. Um, for measurements, but I just made a little thing. I think that's what I'll tell you. I bent it at about almost a quarter. Okay. I'm going to grab my pencil. I'm going to place that down and I'm going to wrap it around holding these down and then I'm going to kind of pinch to see where that's going to fall. Okay. To make a little thing and then I'm just going to move over and snip. So this is what it should look like. All right. This of course has this on there so I got to scoot that up. But that's pretty much what's going to happen and I like to keep my hold of mine while I do this and then I slide my pencil up. All I'm doing now is lining up the bottom with the bottom of my stationary box and then I'm bringing in the other side and making sure it's straight and that's all there is to it and we're going to let that dry. As soon as it dries then I can hook my thing on there. Alright, the inside of our stationary box as far as building it is done. Let's move on to the lid and I'm just going to set this off to the side. So we have our lid and it is scored like this. So all we're going to do on this is very simple. We have, we're looking at it so it's long ways. On this score line, all we're going to do is cut all the way up to the next score line. But we're not going to clip it out. So we're going to do it here and here. 
until it meets the other score line. Let's flip it around. So we have cuts up here now, here, and we're going to do the same on this side. Okay, so what you're going to want to do at this point is turn it like this. Now here are our cuts. Now come to this score line and we're going to cut diagonal over here. And we'll do the same over here. We'll flip it around. We'll find where the score line is down here where it's not cut. And again, we will cut at an angle. Now that we have that, let's just fold on all of our score lines. Okay, let's flip this over to where the peaks are up. In your reserves, you will find this print. Okay, here's the top, here are the sides that need to be colored. So the first thing I want to do looking at it like this is I'm going to measure over two inches and cut and I'm going to measure over again two inches and cut. So we have these two pieces here and I'm just going to double them up. I'm going to measure over five and fifteen sixteenths inch and cut for both. I've got mine cut and I'm going to lay one here and I'm going to lay one here now I want to get for over here. So what I'm going to want to do, because I do want to have the, the rows and that up there, let's cut for the top. Looking at your paper like this, measure over two inches and cut. So this is what you should have. I'm going to turn it this way, measure over five and fifteen sixteenths and cut. So before I glue this or any of these down, I want to get the pieces. So if it doesn't look good, having it here I can always flip it over so for now I'm gonna put it here alrighty so now for this all I want to do is measure over two inches and cut okay you should have this measure over two inches and cut measure over again two inches and cut alright these two pieces are gonna go like this so let's move this one out of the way we're going to apply glue to this and we are going to center that side to side, top to bottom, and we're going to glue that down. We'll do the same for these. This last piece, I've decided that I want to keep it all the same color, so I'm going to apply glue, and I'm going to glue that down to the center and burnish. All right, let's assemble our lid. Let's flip these over. All right, so for these, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add my glue to the sides. I'm going to do one side at a time. Pull that one in. Okay, pull this in and try to line it up with the score line. And you're going to pull these in one at a time, matching up your sides. See, like that. Once you have it in place, that's where you turn it over so you can still get to the inside and burnish it down. Okay, now we're ready to move on to do these sides. Place our glue and we will pull them in and match up our sides. So let's get our stationary box and let's pull this up and around and place our lid on it, which should be a nice fit. Just like that. I think that looks really good. All right, for our flowers, and so I made the three flowers. I don't know if I'm gonna use them all, but I do know that I wanna get some greenery in there. And I definitely want this big guy up there. That's really pretty. And I think, you know, I think I might, oh, that's so pretty, I don't, maybe. So I'm gonna start gluing my pieces down here. And I'll let my leaf go off to the side. So I think that's pretty. Get some glue on those so it all sticks. Have that stick off to the side. 
and get these glued down. Now if you want to use hot glue, it's a quicker tacking method. The next one I'm going to place is this one, which I think is really pretty. If you want to add more leaves, you can too for more greenery. I'm just going to set that one off right there. And then, oh gosh, that looks so pretty just like that. So I am going to save this one for another project. I think I'm just going to go with these two. And that looks really pretty. So I'm going to let my glue dry there. And I'm going to get something for right here. So I have this in my reserves. And this right down here, I think I'm just going to cut this out. Now you don't have to have anything or you can choose whatever it is that you would like to do, but you don't even have to do anything. But for me, I think I want to put something there. And you can also place more flowers. You can do whatever it is that you would like. So this little piece is going to go on the front right here. And I think that looks really good. All right, so now cards are all according to taste, of course, but I am going to be showing you that. Let's flip up this, and I think that our notepad is ready. I'm just going to peel that right on off. I don't have to worry about any overhang because I'm going to use glue here. But the top one has the residue, so that is being pulled right off. I'm going to add my glue so that this stays down nice so that when you pull, these will all come out. So I'm just going to bring that all the way up to that score line there and try to fit that in there. And I'm going to press and yours should be able to flap down. If it doesn't, pull off a couple more. Okay. Let's talk about how to, if you're going to be using, you have enough paper in here to do another one. Now, one thing that I like to do is, or like the cards, is use some of the panels they provide in here. Now, because I am going to be using this for two different ones, I'm going to pick three of these panels, which will be three of the cards. The other three I will save for my other one. So I'm going to divide all of these up. On the back, it looks like this. I have a bunch of mine all done up. So for this one, I'll use this one, this one, and this one. And these three, I will save. Now, also in the pack, there are these which are great for stamping and all that. I'm going to cut these out individually as well as these. Okay, so for this, two of these are going to be for this one. And I'll just take those two for cards. So now I have enough for three, four, five cards. And then there were these. And I punched out one, and the other one's going to be for my other gift box. Let's start with these. Let's grab one of our five and a half by eight and a half pieces, our card bases, and I'm going to fold. Now, one thing you might find is these are going to be too big or not fit exactly how they're supposed to. So in that case, because this one is about the same as, I'm going to do some trimming through here and here. So I trimmed mine down a bit, and this is what you're going to do for the other one, so that we don't have to do all the same. But uh, once I have it to where it looks, I can still see white around it, it looks fairly decent for a card, I'll glue that down and it goes in the box. So what I've done so far is I've cut them to fit onto my card front. So I got five of these. Here's the one we did. So I usually do easy cards for the inside that are easy, that um, can be for anything, and also flat so that the person who gets this as a gift or passes it as a gift or whatever, the postage is not more than a regular stamp. Now on my last one, I went into my reserves and I cut a piece 
This here, I'm just going to apply glue and I'm going to glue that down right like that. And there is the final card. Now, for the tags, um, this paper collection, of course, has some beautiful tags. So I'm going to grab probably about five, six of these and I'll stick them in there. I have all my tags cut out and I really like the way that this came out. Um, I won't be selling this one. I'll probably be keeping this one for myself. I, uh, I really like the colors, the earth tones and the nature. Now as far as the little, sometimes you see me put some cards or little note cards, that's where I kind of look in the reserves. And because I could write on this with black ink and still see it, um, you can always just fold this sort of stuff in half and stick it in there or put white paper in there. Different things like that that you can place in your pockets. So that concludes this tutorial and I hope that you have enjoyed it. I know I had a lot of fun and I continue to make these because I just, I absolutely love them. They're easy to make, they have a great use and you can do it with a wide range of paper. Happy crafting everybody and I'll see you real soon on my next tutorial which is a mini album and I'll be showing you a different design for the cover on that. See you soon.